Good morning, everybody. Just a few words before we begin today. Uh, this year's OLMC golf outing and parish dinner will be held Monday, May 15th at the Knoll Country Club. There are a number of ways to participate. So please check out www.olmc.academy for more information. Our men's and women's groups meet this week. Uh, they are drop-in groups, so feel free to check them out. Uh, details can be found in the bulletin. Our Beyond the Tithe opportunity for May is Peter's Pence. This national collection enables the Pope to respond with emergency financial assistance to the neediest throughout the world, those who suffer as a result of war, oppression, and natural disaster. You can give to the collection uh, in all of the regular ways. For more of what's going on, check out the bulletin or our parishioner portal online. Be in touch with us in the parish office uh, for further assistance of any sort. The fourth Sunday of Easter is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. This weekend, every year, we focus on the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd whose love for his flock is stronger than death. Our first reading is taken from St. Peter's first sermon given on the day of Pentecost. Peter exhorts the Jewish crowd to repent of their wickedness, the personal, social, and societal corruption that sent Jesus to his death and turned to God. In response to his preaching, 3,000 people repented, were baptized, and received the Holy Spirit that day saving them from the waywardness of their generation. Our second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. He encourages the early Christians to center their lives on Jesus, the shepherd and guardian of their souls. Jesus has rescued them from their errant ways, St. Peter writes, and has pioneered for them the way of suffering love that they now, at the call of Christ, must follow. Our gospel today offers us both comfort and challenge. We are challenged by Jesus to hear the voice of our Good Shepherd and follow him, knowing that if we remain faithful to his call, his promise of abundant life is ours. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, and our Mass is offered for Theodore Walter.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, 
and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. I have to say before you know before we get before we get going here, um, as as we're processing, and I thought, you know, what a shame it is that nobody was willing to sit in the splash zone today. You know, <laughs> it's like, I mean, you've perhaps been to SeaWorld and Shamu. Do they still have that? I don't know. Who knows, right? It was a cruelty to Shamu or something. Anyway, here, splash I mean, Everyone enjoys that. So I'm, I'm very thankful that that our three servers uh, have, have chosen to sit in the splash zone. Uh, Father Wade gives me a good audience. So, <laughs> and it, can I say, it's his birthday. So this is, I, I suppose, I suppose, and we can, we'll greet him after mass. I'm sure he, he, I'm sure he wouldn't mind that. <laughs> but uh, this is his birthday treat, is to like sit front row of a mass that he's not <laughs> celebrating. And I was like, so yeah, he, he's, a, he's a very good hearted man and he's, and, he's, and he's trying to listen to the voice of the shepherd, not me, the voice of Jesus, the shepherd. And, and I'm hoping to be able to channel that a little bit today. Um, yeah, what's, what's going on here in the passage is, is a little bit hard to, to, to grasp at first glance uh, because we, we start with the 10th chapter of John's gospel. We really need to go back and push into the ninth chapter, the end of the ninth chapter to see what Jesus is responding to. Right? He's never simply just, say, preaching or teaching, like he's got a classroom or even a congregation. He's saying, okay, let's all settle down and, you know, give me, let me give you some nice teaching that you can, uh, you can munch on, edify you, edif- you know, strengthen your soul, your mind, your heart. He's, he's actually being confronted here at the end of the ninth chapter of John's gospel and then into the tenth, and he's giving a response for what's going on. In the ninth chapter, he's healed uh, the man born blind. I don't know if you remember this, because we had it, it, we've had it in our cycle recently. We don't always have these passages lining up for us, but the, the curing of the man born blind. And the man born blind, he, of course, he doesn't, he doesn't know Jesus. Jesus heals him and then slips off into the distance. The man then has to face the trials of, uh, 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 that have come about as a result of his being healed. People are saying, who is, who is the man who healed you? We know he's a sinner. And the blind man is saying, well, you know, I don't know, but I, I think that he's probably a prophet. I mean, it's only, it's only one who has come from God who's able to affect such works, right? Who's able, to, who's able to bring about such cures. And they say, what do you know? You're a sinner. You're, you're totally in sin. What do you know? But he knows what he knows, and he refuses to give it up. Namely, he knows Jesus as the one who has cured him. And he's unwilling to let Jesus go. Yeah, he's no, he knows that he's been cured and the rest. Now, this drives him into, into conflict, not only with the, the authorities, but also, if you remember, with his parents, right? He's willing to, they're giving him up, really, but he's willing to, to stand strong in the, in the face of trial and, and cling, and hold on to, to Jesus with all his might, even though he doesn't have the, the full view of who he is. And then Jesus comes on the scene at the end of that passage, and, he, and he, br- he brings the man to faith. He says, do you believe? Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he that I can believe in him? He, it is he, it is I, I'm standing in front of you now. And he says, I do believe. This is, this is significant for two parts of this passage. 
The first is that Jesus is claiming to be the Son of Man. He's claiming to be the one that God designates as king over all of, over all of his creation. He's claiming to be the one who, who will rule, who will bring God's judgment, God's right ordering to all of creation, to the whole world. Secondly, he's leading, and he's leading by the heart of the man. Let me say the first, first things first. Jesus is claiming to be king. He's claiming to be God's anointed king at the head of his renewal movement. And this is significant because he's not the only one on the scene who's doing that. You have someone like Herod, right, who is putting on airs as king of the Jews. But what's his ambition? Right? Do we, has he entered through the gate? Has he entered through the gate or is he a thief and a robber? Right? Why is he claiming to be king of the Jews? Is it because he wants to lead people in the way of God? Is it because he wants to renew the people of God? He wants to get God's kingdom project back online? No, it's because he wants power. He wants, uh, he wants the, the, uh, the fame and fortune that comes with having a position of power. He's a thief and a robber, right? He's there not to lead the sheep, but to fleece the flock. Yeah, the, the challenge is this, right? The image, so I should say, the image of Shepherd and sheep is a favorite image in the, uh, in the Hebrew scriptures of a king and God's people, right? The king and, and the people of God. And so Herod coming out and saying, right, I am the king of the Jews, he's putting, he's putting on airs, he's putting himself at the front of the movement, but it's a movement that's going nowhere. And the people aren't responding to him, right? He's the stranger here who doesn't even know the voice of the sheep. Yeah, I think, I think it's an interesting thing for us as well, right? Whenever we consider power, authority, that kind of thing, we think of, I don't know, CEOs, we think of, we think of politicians, we think of people who sit behind desks and order from afar. But the image of, say, ruling, of authority, of kingship that Israel prefers and that God prefers in his scriptures is that of a shepherd who knows his sheep, who calls them by name, and leads them out, right? So a, a shepherd needs to spend a lot, of, you need to spend a lot of time with the sheep in order to have them acclimate to your voice. And he knows each of them by name. And by, the, by that call then, the people follow him. Now this is, this is the second part of the, of the man born blind, right? Is the fact that Jesus has, le has led that man out of darkness. And he's led him out of, say, the, the darkness of, of not having sight into sight. He's led him out of the darkness of unbelief into faith. Here he is showing himself to be the good shepherd, showing himself to be God's anointed king. And this is his response to the Pharisees who are challenging Jesus, right? Who, who are you, right? And, and you're not who you say you are. And Jesus is saying, no, in, in fact, I am. So he gives them this figure of speech. It, in other translations, it says, this is a parable, right? That Jesus is, he's, he's called his sheep by name and he leads them out. He walks ahead of them, the sheep follow him, they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger, the rest. Okay, so the challenge for us, let me bring it, let me bring it forward you know, a couple thousand years here. The challenge for us is to, is to recognize the voice of the good shepherd. Do we or do we not? This is a challenge for us. Yeah, do we, do we have this relationship with Jesus, right? He calls, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Do we, do we have the experience of being called by name by Jesus? Now, this, this is a little piece of, of truth for us. Each and every one of us has been called by name. We've been baptized by name, right? The formula for baptism is N, so put your name there, N, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, right? We have to say your name and baptize you. So each of us has been called by name, and Jesus still knows us by name and calls us by name here and now, right? He calls his own sheep by name. He leads them out. He leads us out. He's led us out of the darkness and slavery of sin. He's led us out of the, the darkness of a corrupt generation, right? We see St. Peter's preaching in the Acts of the Apostles. It says, this is, a, this is a corrupt generation. 
Do you think our generation is less corrupt than the generation that, that he faced then? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll leave the assessment to you, but, but our, our generation is a corrupt generation. It's one of the things that allows me to do a lot of kind of um, arms, uh, preaching at arm's length, right? Because I get to say things like, yeah, we live in a corrupt generation. So we live among a people with a waywardness of, a, of heart. We live in a people, we live among a people whose hearts are given over to idolatry and any number of idolatries, right? Pleasure, popularity, wealth. I mean, but, you know, name, name, your, name, your favorite, name your favorite counterfeit God here, right? We, people's hearts are off. And because we live among them, right, our hearts are off too. And Jesus has come to lead us out of the corruption of our generation. And he does so by calling us by name and breathing his own life into us so that we, could follow, so we can follow him, the good shepherd, into abundant life. Abundant life, that is, life focused squarely on the praise of Almighty God and giving our whole lives in service of Him. And right, so this is, that's the life that He's calling us to. As you remember, He's calling us to a life of great and costly love. And we go that way by faith. We go that way with Jesus at the head. It's the only way we can make that journey together. And it's the only way that we can live out the life of great and costly love that we've been called to, is by entrusting ourselves to Jesus and following where he leads. And so this, this is where he's, he's leading us. Okay? Now, one sign, of course, that Jesus wants to, to give, that, his, that he is the one who has come to lead God's people. And this is good for us, I think, to hear, because we, we have to discern the voice of God amidst the, the cacophony of all, all manner of voices that are out there in the world and that are in our hearts and in our minds. Right? Jesus says, amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. This is, this is the gate for the sheep. I mean, it sounds a bit uh, weird. Uh, okay, Jesus, an animate object. What does it mean? He's, he swings this way and that. He's, uh, I don't know, right? He's the, ga the gate for the sheep. The, the shepherd is the gate for the sheep. The shepherd uh, at night lies across the entrance of the sheepfold and gives entry then only to the sheep and doesn't allow in the predators. Jesus plays that role at the risk of his own life. And he's the one who sacrifices his life for the sheep. Any of you have experience with sheep? Anyone? No? You're not willing to admit it? I, I, yeah, I get that, you know. But anyone know sheep? They're stupid animals. I should, you know, I should, okay, they are. They're, they're stupid, defenseless creatures. Yeah? No? Anyone? Yeah. Hey, no one to argue about sheep? Okay. Yeah. They just want me to get done. I understand that also. <laughs> I under Except for Father Wade. See, he's going to encourage me today to go, to go even longer. Okay. The sheep. Hey, sheep are whatever. They're defenseless, silly animals. Okay. You're going to give your life for them? This is a strange, this is, that's a strange image, right, that we don't often consider. Jesus is giving his life for the sheep. The good shepherd is giving his life for the sheep. It's not, an, it's not an even exchange. What kind of transaction is that? You know, who would give that calculation? No one except the one who is madly in love. Yes, and I'm, I'm, on, I'm on firm ground here. St. Jose Maria Escriva said, Jesus is the divine madman. He's the divine madman. Because he's crazy in love with you. He's crazy in love with you. He's calling, by, he's calling you by name. He's leading you out. He is, he is your king and Lord, and he is at the head of his people, leading us into abundant life, a life that is nothing other than his own life of radical generosity. Okay, so that's the, that's the point of application. Jesus is leading us into God's kingdom of holiness and justice. He's leading us into ecstatic union, going beyond ourselves, union with God, our almighty Father. And he's leading us into full-bodied service of him, pouring our lives out for the good of his beloved world. Yeah, he's leading us into that kingdom, that everlasting kingdom that he has inaugurated in his cross by dying for the sheep. And he now calls us into, not only as sheep, I should say, but also as those who are growing into their full capacity as shepherds. Because that's us too. 
Right? It's our call not only to, to see Jesus, to entrust ourselves to him, to follow him on the way. It's our call to be Jesus. This is why we eat his body and drink his blood. It's so that his, his own spirit, his own life of love can animate us in every facet of our lives. That we can, always, we can always seek him no matter where we are. We can always seek him and seek his way and expect to receive his power, his strength at work in us and working through us to follow him on the way that is everlasting and, and abundant life. And so my friends, that's it, right? Okay, we have, we have to seek Jesus. We have to listen for his voice. We have, to be, we have to be eager to respond to his call when it comes. And then we have, to, we have to follow him on the way that is radical generosity. As we grow in love of God, full-hearted love of God and of our neighbor as ourself. And Jesus is now at the head of his people. He's making his way. It's ours to trust and follow him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. Our response will be, Lord, have mercy. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Our Mass this morning is offered for Theodore Walter.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory and for our good for that of all holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious <coughs> majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Letare.